On this episode, we prove it truly is a small world as we visit Hanford, California. We discover the exotic flavors of Mediterranean cuisine, satisfy our sweet tooth at a Portuguese bakery, dig into a hot dog on steroids, enjoy a pupusa or two at an El Salvadorian restaurant, find our perfect cup of tea in China Alley, and join in on a moon festival celebration. It's a cultural whirlwind of dance, music, and amazing food. Hanford, California. Come on, let's dine out along the road. That's so good. <laughs> every town, every city has its hot spots and hidden gems. Join us as we travel the back roads and the main highways, sharing the untold stories behind the food, drink, culture, and notable people that make up these unique treasures. Come on, let's dine out along the road. Located in historic China Alley, LT Su Tea Room is a place of elegant tradition, gracious hospitality, and award-winning teas. Known as the first and oldest tea company, the business features over 100 different loose-leaf teas, from the traditional to the fragrant blends infused with fruits and florals, all handcrafted on site. It's a passion for tea, it's a devotion to the community, it's tea with a cause. Hey, Steve. Hey. How are you? Good, good. Good to see you again. Good seeing you as well. The last time I was here, you were in the middle of a major reconstruction. Yes, we were. Look how beautiful this place is. Now. Yeah, it's finally all come together. Oh we my gosh. Uh, reopened uh, just a couple of days ago. We are rejuvenated and ready to roll. So, this is the famous China Alley. This is it. Wow, talk about being transported to the 1800s, Steve. This is basically in almost its original form. Correct? Yeah, it is, it is, uh-huh. It really is, especially the exterior. Yeah. At one time, this whole area was kind of the epicenter for Chinese culture, oh, right? You think about the Chinese community in San Francisco and certainly Los Angeles, but here throughout the entire Central Valley, this was really where Chinese culture gathered and came together. Right? Yes, yes, this was one of the largest uh, rural Chinese communities. When you come to this beautiful town of Hanford, you see history and culture just all sort of gravitating together in this beautiful tea house. How did this all start for you? Well, in 2011, the National Trust for Historic Preservation designated all of China Alley as one of the 11 most endangered historic places in America. And at that time, Steve and I were, you know, we're both on the preservation, China Alley Preservation Board, and we were wondering, what can we do to revitalize it? And the space was open, and we thought, hmm, what would look good in here? And it just seemed, tea just came so naturally. You know, it's <laughs> interesting, too, is that a lot of us that haven't had the experience of loose leaf tea, we get the packages, and there's a whole different experience, too, because you can do so many different things with flavor, right? Right. Well, for instance, the teas we're going to try now are from our award-winning <laughs> San Joaquin Valley line. And we incorporated fruits and nuts from the San Joaquin Valley wow. with our teas. This God, is what so we call awesome. uh, fig garden. It's a black tea. It's a, one of the finer black teas that we mix with mm. uh, mission figs. It's got a great aroma. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Mm. It's also good ice, but I'm sort of a hot tea oh, drinker. Oh, wow, that's delicious. My second favorite of this line is called Blossom Trail. Like the, it's all the, you know, when you drive in the springtime, you have miles and miles mm. of blossoms with all the fruits and nut trees in bloom. Is that a peach that it's I'm thinking It's a peach tree. Wow, with, that's great. It's with apricots and almonds mm. in it. You know, for a lot of us that grew up here in the San Joaquin Valley, you know, they may not be familiar with China Alley. We're certainly familiar with the restaurant that was the cornerstone for China Alley. And it has a special connection for you. My great-grandfather uh, was one of the early pioneers that settled in uh, Hanford's Chinatown. He came here in 1883. He started selling noodles for five cents a bowl wow. upstairs. And in 1958, this is the first menu. The Imperial Dynasty was born. I was, was going to say, we're sitting, in, we're sitting in history, right? The, the chairs, the table, the menu, right? So when um, Steve and I decided to open the tea room, it really was truly a homecoming for me. And I don't think I could feel this way about anywhere else. What do you want people to know about Hamford? It's going through a little bit of a metamorphic yes, change, isn't it? Yes, is, it is. Of course, uh, I'm old enough I remember the great heydays. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that Hanford is um, still um, what the loveliest parts of small town USA. It's it's it has it's very 
culturally diverse, and, and that makes it rich. You know what's magical about small town USA? Mm -hmm. is great people like you. Well, thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to you. <laughs> thank, thank you. Just down from China Alley, our international adventure continues at Toti's Papusuria. Simple yet cozy, this authentic El Salvadorian eatery packs a big time flavor punch with culinary traditions of its own. Homemade soups, tamales, and of course, papusas. Thick corn tortillas stuffed with piping hot fillings of meats, cheeses, or vegetables. Amazing food at affordable prices, enough to have you say, Totis Papusuria, Savroso. Welcome yeah, to Totis Papusuria. Thank you, thank you. I'm so excited to sample some comida from El Salvador. Salvador. I want to tell everybody, this is not Mexican food. It's not Mexican. This is food from El Salvador and Central America. This is the famous papusas. Well, usually in El Salvador, we don't use, we use our hands. hands. Sure. Let's see with our hands. Yeah, we use the cabbage on the side. On the side. Yeah, for sure. A little bit on the side. And this is not chili or something as spicy. It's just tomato sauce. Right. It's not we really a salsa. It's more of a little, little condiment to yes, kick up is. the flavor a little bit. We take a little piece of the pupusa like this. Here, a little piece. And we use like a spoon. Yeah, create our own little El Salvadoran uh, taco. Yeah, yeah, you can look like. I can eat 10 of these. And tell me these, these look like empanadas. It looks like empanadas, but in our country we call it pastelitos. Pastelitos. Yeah. And inside of it is? Uh... We made the masa very, very thin, and then we stuff with um, chicken and vegetables, and then we put in a fryer. Mm. I know, though, those are chicharrones, right? Yes, it is. Chicharrones. And a little bit of uh, yucca plant. Mm. That's good. Yeah. Those of us that grew up in the Central Valley, we're used to tamales, but a whole different way, right? With masa and cornmeal, but an El Salvador and tamale is a little bit different. Yes, the masa is uh, a little bit smooth, like different, and we wrap in the banana leaf. And typically you put chicken, pork. We, we have a, typically in El Salvador, mm. we eat just chicken. That's why we bring over here just chicken. Oh, the chicken is so tender. And what about these traditional El Salvadoran drinks? This is traditional. We, all the drinks we made over here, like a homemade. And this is the ensalada drink. The ensalada drink is a nice kind of fruit. Everything is natural. Mm, that is it's, so it's good. tropical fruit. Wow. Thank you for taking us down a little trip oh, to no, El Salvador. Thank you for bringing to you. Muchas gracias. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. You know, the restaurant is, uh, has a powerful legacy, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it has a connection to your father. And right. Tell us the story behind that. Yeah, so my father passed away in 2012. And when we were younger, we would go to the little flea market and we'd sell pupusas. And since we were little, he'd always say, I want to start a restaurant. But he'd say it, and we'd always think about, yeah, it's like a long-term goal. So after we passed away, I think we decided, like, this is something that he really wanted to do. And we realized how time is so short, so we decided a year later, we actually opened the restaurant. So it's just sad that, you know, it had happened after my dad passed away and he couldn't see it, but it's nice because we named the restaurant after him. Because when he played soccer, they called him Toti because of a famous soccer player at the time. So that's why we decided to name the place Toti. You know what I noticed is I notice a, a, a place where there is just a lot of powerful Latina women that are mm -hmm. integral in the running of this business. I mean, oh, how yeah. proud of you are that? Yeah, my mom has been a great example to me and my sister. Like, whenever I'm tired, I always think of how much she's working. Because um, she's also a nurse, so she works at night. Oh my gosh. Yeah, as an RN, um, and then she works here. So it's kind of funny, because sometimes we have customers that are like, oh, you delivered my child. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would come from anywhere in the valley to come and experience the energy and the flavor of your family and your food. Oh, thank yeah. you. Go a Salvador. Go a Salvador. <laughs> <laughs> Great to meet you. You have a special pride in making sure the food is authentic uh -huh. to a Salvador, yeah. right? Yeah, that's what it, it, uh, we, we saw because in Heimford, we don't have any of that. The restaurant yeah. business is hard, but yeah. it makes it easier when you have a great family uh -huh. and great support. Your family is terrific, and your food is incredible. Oh, you're incredible. Ah, yeah. good. Thank nice you. to meet you. Yeah, thank you for you're, telling that. You're welcome. El Salvador! <laughs> 
Next up, a short walk to Courthouse Park, where we visit Raven's Hot Diggity Dog, a place that certainly knows how to serve up a good old dog just right. The Raven family, known for their culinary skills throughout the valley, also offers up deep pit beef, turkey, and pork sandwiches, in addition to their famous linguisa. All juicy goodness, no matter what you select. Hey, Anthony. Good afternoon. Good, good, good afternoon. How are you? Good, good, good. good, good. to see you. Yeah. I've been wanting to try your hot dogs awesome, for a while. Awesome. Okay. Hey, what's good? Tell me, uh, what should I get? The big dog is probably the most popular one. Yeah. We do a big dog, a big chili dog. Ooh. We have uh, the regular dogs and regular chili dogs. We have Polish dogs, um, linguisa, spicy hot link, mm. and we also have the sandwiches. We got tri-tip sandwich, deep hip beef, deep hip turkey, and deep hip pork. I've heard about your sandwiches, great, yeah. but I think I want to jump on that big chili dog. The big chili dog. That's okay. right. That? Yeah. Anything to drink? Yeah, how about a Diet Coke? Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you have so much. Nice Can't day. wait. Thank you. Great. <laughs> I want to take a little bite of my hot diggity big dog here. Mmm. Oh, delicious. <laughs> Anywhere I go to a little city, I always try to find a way to find a little hot dog kiosk or stand. Now, you're, this is not really your main business. You have yep. a business in Armona, and you yes. do a lot of different things. What was the yes. passion to try to keep this open? It's just something we wanted to do for the community, mainly. Uh, we've been in Armona for 45 years. So wow. we, we started out as a slaughter plant then. A lot of dairies, we'd go out and slaughter the animals and cut and wrap meat. And then my husband started experimenting with uh, the linguisa, which is a Portuguese sausage. Yeah. So we make our own and, uh, and the seasoning too. And then we opened up a restaurant uh, there in Armona also. So when this came available, it was just perfect for us. And we just bring our food from over there, over here. Yeah. Do you have a favorite hot dog? One that uh, you like more than others? Well, actually, I like the linguisa dog. Would you guess that? Of course, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. I love linguisa, too. Yes, uh-huh. You know, I'm definitely going to be back to Hanford to have some hot diggity dogs here. Next time, you might want to try some of our grilled onion and bell pepper oh, on now you tell there. me. Now you tell me. <laughs> In business for over a decade, Hanford Portuguese Bakery welcomes their customers with warm smiles and a huge selection of delectable goodies, from their signature sweet bread and flaky pastries to the bakery's seasonal specialties. Aside from their baked goods, the bakery also sells a variety of Portuguese food items and souvenirs, which in any language translates into yummy goodness. Ozzy, hey, how morning. are you? Hey, hey, good. Good, good, good to, to see, see you. you. Good to see you, too. I can't come to Hanford and do an episode without coming to see one of my favorite bakeries in the entire valley. Thank you very much, sir. I love your bakery. Your Portuguese sweet bread, which is kind of a signature bread, and the culture of Portugal is as good as any I've ever had. It's, it's just amazing. My sweet bread is the whole recipe. It's came from my grandmother. Describe some of the other things you have here in the bakery. The roosters are right here. Every Portuguese, this is for good luck. Portuguese good luck. Wow. This came from the city called Barcelos. So the name of the, the rooster is uh, the Gold of Barcelos, means the rooster of Barcelos. Hola, Fatima. Hey, Ray. How are you? I'm good. good How to are see you? you. What are you baking today? What are you making? Well, I'm making bread like normal yes. and some sweet, sweet bread, cajadas, Portuguese cap cupcakes. Yes. And uh, making some orders for both fights. You and Ozzy are both from Portugal, mm -hmm. right? How did you meet? How did you guys connect? We live in the same island and we never met each other. And uh, when I came to America, he was here. He lived in San Jose. Then I, I got a job where his mom was working. And uh, he used to go like once a month over there. And when I started working over there, then he started going like every day after <laughs> work. <laughs> And what is this? This looks really beautiful. It's the chocolate cake. And so the top looks like a, it's like a, a flan. custard? It's like a custard. Uh, the cake is very moisty because the flan, when you put it, you put the cake first on the on the bottom and then the because of the weight, 
the cake comes up and the plum goes down. So. Now that is a perfect marriage. And these are your traditional breads, right, uh -huh. from Portugal? Pão de casa, that we call pão de casa, this one. That's the old traditional bread. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the Portuguese corn bread. It's um, mm. very good, too. People love it. Can I take something home with me? Sure, of course yeah. you're going to take some How about some, some of your home. traditional cornbread? Sure. Yeah. You'll take some sweet bread. Whatever you want to give here. me, I'll take it. Yeah, it was yes. nice to Obrigado. see you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Dating back to 1893, the Taoist Temple Museum provides another rare and unique glimpse into the Chinese heritage. The Taoist Temple Museum provides an engaging collage of tranquil beauty enriched with the beliefs, lifestyles, and the cultural history that goes back over a century ago with the westward expansion of the Central Pacific Railroad. The railroad established Hanford. Uh, they ran a new line from Goshen and it's going west over the over the mountains to the coast. How old is this area? If you, can you put a, a year on it? Uh, well, Hanford was established in 1877, and the buildings, most of the, the dates in this area are 1880s. Mm. This building, we think, is uh, 1880. What's your hope for the future? What do, what do you want it to look like a few years from well, now? We'd like to kind of bring it back to the uh, hustle bustle that it was in the old days. Mm -hmm. Of course, we probably won't do that because what part of the hustle bustle was uh, gambling houses where people could mark lottery tickets, <laughs> and that's no, no longer possible. And where, where did all these pieces of art come from? Are they were collections from over the years? Are A they donated? lot of them came from China. Wow. All these chairs were shipped over from China. They're um, hand-carved teak wood with mother of pearl and Beautiful. marble. And you can see what the um, cushions were. Yeah. Made out of straw. straw. These are hand carved out of burl wood. They're called the 80 mortals. We have four here and four over on the other side. It's, a, it's amazing that more people haven't experienced this little piece of Chinese culture. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I love it here. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for sharing it. It's the tasty allure of the Mediterranean in downtown Hanford. Zaytuna Restaurant presents a trifecta warm atmosphere, friendly service, and fresh, exciting new flavors above the ordinary. Famous for its kebabs and crowd-pleasing garlic sauce, Zaytuna provides a savory balance of rich, enticing flavors with a health-conscious menu. Non-fat meats, whole grains and vegetables, and the finest olive oils and Arabic seasonings. It's an international taste of life. Hey, we're behind the scenes here where all the magic happens here at Zaytuna with Chef Joe, is he's gonna show us how to make their signature dish, one of the most popular things here at the restaurant, their spicy chicken. Chef Joe, show us how it all comes together. Well, basically we just get six pieces of chicken, throw it in the pan, you see? We get our soy sauce. If you right. want, you can just give me about a, sure. a little bit in there, not you too much. You me, huh? And then yeah, we got curry. Okay, a little curry. So mix everything in there. Yeah. And then we yeah. throw the bell pepper and onions right in there. Yeah. <laughs> and then we just mix it up. I like to eat with my hands. All right, well, I'm, I'm the from, same I'm way. I'm from that I'm world, way. right? I like to eat with my hands, Chef. Let's try a little bit of this, this chicken. Mmm. I mean, what is a, you know, this farm girl from Tulare doing cooking Jordanian food. It, it's beautiful and it's delicious. And the first time I had it, I just thought, oh my gosh, what, what is in here? This is finally something different. What did you prepare for us? Um, right here, we have our vegetarian plate. This one here? Yes, this, this is our baba ganoush, which is a roasted eggplant. And then um, this right here is our Mediterranean mm. pasta with our falafel topped with the tahini and a sumac spice, which is something that is um, only prominent in, in you know Middle Eastern countries. Yeah. Nice and simple, a really little bit is. of sweet basil and some pasta. I mean, we try to keep everything under five ingredients, just keep it fresh and good for you. Tell us a little bit about what makes Jordanian food uniquely different as, par as far as Mediterranean cuisine goes. Um, Jordanian food is a lot more spices because it has that Indian influence in it. So whereas a lot of the Greek places, they use a lot more vinegar, a lot more oils. Ours is mainly spices, curries, sumac, cumin. This is really good. That lamb rib. This then is try really it with good. this garlic sauce. Oh, absolutely. Just dip. Oh my gosh. Right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Oh, thank Great you so much you. for coming. I'm You're so welcome. glad you could come yes. eat with us. Ahmad Jordan, 
to Hanford, California. How in the world did that happen? It is a long distance, huh? <laughs> it is. I came here for some business, and I start in the restaurant field. So I start from the bottom, actually, the, how they they say yes. it. You know, I start as a dishwasher. Yes. So I want to know everything in this business. It took me actually a while, maybe two, three years. I worked like in each department uh, in the restaurant field. I want to be like authentic, especially in my food. It's it's all of it authentic. So. If you had a chance to explain a little bit about your culture and your country to all of us in the Central Valley, what would you convey about your country to all of us? Actually, we have a great host hospitality. You know, we're very well known about how we treat people, especially if you're a guest from out of Jordan. I love your restaurant. I love the Thank food. You. I enjoyed meeting your staff. Thank and, you so much. And I really enjoyed meeting you. Thank yeah. you for having us uh, on your TV screen. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, Zukra. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's music, mooncakes, and mythical lions dancing in the street for the annual Chinese Moon Festival. Often described as the second most important date on the Chinese calendar, the Moon Festival celebrates the end of the harvest, signifying a time of peace and family unity.